bench I have this Sony KDL 40 EX 500. It's a 40 inch LCD TV that is completely dead. No power, no relay clicks, no lights, no nothing. So let's get the back off this one and see what's going on with it. So we identify the components on the inside of this Sony TV. We have the power supply. We have a lap driver assembly. This is the for the, the power supply, the ballast assembly for the fluorescent lamps. Over here we have the main signal board. And up here we have the timing control or the TCON board. And one thing that's interesting to note is that right on this power supply board here for the lamps, it says Samsung. And that's because Samsung made of uh, this generation of Sony uh, LCD television, the actual glass panel was made by Samsung and Sony just put their name on it. Uh, Sony did make the other components, so such as the power supply and the um, main signal board. But the actual glass on these ones were made uh, for Sony by Samsung. Because this set is totally dead, we're going to look at the power supply as that's where our issue is likely going to be, is something on the power supply has failed. Looking at the power supply on this set, you'll notice if you're familiar with how the Samsung power supplies look, these ones look completely different. It's a completely different design. It's still a switching power supply, but it's completely different than the design that Samsung used. Let's get a closer look at this. The first thing we'll do is we'll check our input fuse just to make sure that our main fuse isn't blown. So we've got the meter just in continuity mode. We'll check our main fuse here. And our fuse is not blown. So we know that uh, at least we've got power getting into the primary side of things. First thing we'll do is we're going to power this thing up and look and see if we've got our standby voltage. Now because this is a switching power supply, uh, dangerous to work on, we're going to plug it in or we have plugged it into our isolation transformer. So I can start checking for some of the voltages. And we've got two different, looks like we've got two different inverters on this. I'm not familiar with this power supply. So we're just going to start looking at the uh, some of the secondary voltages here and see whether we have anything. Most of the time they do limit or they do um, list what the supplies do. Regulated 12 volts. Timing controller 12 volts, regulated 12 volts. I'm looking for the standby supply and we should have a standby output on one of these connectors on a regulated 24. Here we go. Power on. Standby 3.3. This is our standby supply right here. This will be our standby transformer right here that I'm putting my finger on just for all you idiots out there that say I'm not being safe. Yes, I'm touching the transformer. It's 3 volts. Get over it. I'm not going to get a shock. Uh, this is probably the regulator. Oh, I've got 3.3 volts here, so that one's working. i got 3.3 volts coming off my diode here. Well, as you can see, our 3.3 volts is now present on the set. And it won't turn on. And it's showing up. The next pin up is actually a power toggle. So we got our 3.3 volts over to our main board over here. And the main board is responsible for telling the power supply to turn on. Okay, I've taken a quick look at this and determined that uh, it actually, the standby power supply actually is working. Uh, our voltage is there, 3.3 volts is actually on the black lead. I misread this initially thinking that the black would be ground and that the standby 3.3 where it's printed on the board, it looks to be right next to the brown lead, but it actually is referring to the black lead. The next, the third one up is power on and it is indicated by, it says power on beside it and it is gone to 3.3 volts which is indicating that the main board is calling for power but the unit is not powering up whatsoever. So I just did a quick check if it's calling for power and it calls for power through this optocoupler which has got voltage on the uh, LED side which would then make the phototransistor on the other side conduct which would attempt to turn on this portion of the power supply and this portion of the power supply is not turning on. If we reference the hot side with our negative probe on the large filter capacitor and we'll just take a look at our voltage readings here. 
And we'll just go over to this little fusible resistor. We measure one side. There's negative 0.2 volts. On this side of it, there is 391 volts. That's our primary side, as I said, with the 450 volt capacitor. You know it's a voltage doubler and it's going to be bloody high voltage. So something else can give you one hell of a kick if you're sticking your fingers where they're not supposed to be. This 0.1 ohm fusible resistor is blown. And it's probably because these transistors have failed. So let's get this thing unpowered again. We'll discharge that capacitor and uh, pull the board out and just measure some of these transistors. But I bet you we're going to find uh, we've got uh, chopper transistors have failed and it's taken out this fusible resistor. If I measure across the resistor, you'll see that there's a high voltage, 348 volts, still dropping because this fusible resistor has gone open. We have a short, probably transistors here on this power supply that are going to require replacement, but we know we got definitely got a problem and it's in this power supply. But let's let this capacitor discharge and then we'll take a look and see what's wrong with it. So here we go, we'll check these uh, transistors here. These are the output transistors for this power supply here. Our main power supply and these are MOSFET transistors. And our source and drain are shorted. And our gate. So these two transistors here are cooked. These are 2SK4096 and also the fusible resistor here is blown and basically what these transistors do is they take the 380 volts or so that's rectified by the rectifier and they switch it back and forth. They go back and forth at a high frequency. One switches on when the other one's off and vice versa and they just switch back and forth create a high frequency chopped DC signal which creates a high frequency AC signal in the transformer which is rectified by these diodes over here to power up the inverter the rest of the set. I'm going to uh, take a look at that other Sony TV that I've got and see whether it's got a comparable power supply. If we have the same power supply I may just swap the entire power supply over but if I can get uh, parts off another TV to fix it, I'll go that route. So I'm just going to take a look at my other set and see whether the one with the broken screen has the same board as this one. So the transistor, as you can see, the board is is completely different for this other TV that we're going to scrap. Uh, the 2SK4096 or 32 amp uh, pulse MOSFET, and I'm going to replace it with these 2SK3568 on this board. These ones are 40 amp rated, so these are higher, higher uh, current uh, rating than on here. So we should be able to replace these ones from this good board from this scrap Sony TV here. This is this one's going in the garbage. I'll just show you around the back of the TV before I scrap it here, because it's quite a difference in these two sets. So this is the one we're working on here. It's got a little signal board here, your timing controller and the power supply. As you can see the power supply is relatively small. Look at the size of the power supply for this one. And around the back of this set. It's uh, a much bigger main board. Timing controller board. And here's our power supplies for our lamp drivers. On this one, this is also a 40 inch. This one actually came off of KVL 40S200 and the one we're working on is this one KDL 40EX500 a little newer it's a little bit older this one as you can tell from the from the design of it but this one here has got a, a physically broken screen so I'm just going to pull the boards out of this one and uh, scrap the rest of it if I can make use of some of the components off of this set to get this other set going, that's the name of the game. And that's what we're going to be doing here. I'm going to grab these two transistors and replace these two that are shorted. See if we can get this power supply on this one working. So as we 
to use our our solder sucker here to remove the solder off of the the leads here. We'll do the same to remove the failed parts on the, the board under repair. It's these ones here that are bad. Uh, any number of things could have caused these parts to fail. Usually it's a power surge. But you can also have a bad um, surge suppression components. You can have a bad varistor, or it could be a bad solder connection. Usually, what happens is both of the transistors end up uh, firing at the same time, and that's a bad thing. Normally, the way that these operate, one transistor is in conduction, the other one is not, and uh, these cycle back and forth from one to the other. But if both of them were to fire at the same time, it will cause a dead short. Now a concern that I do have is that the drive I see here may be damaged. I won't know that until I actually get the shorted parts out. And uh, we can test it then but uh, if you're seeing this video then that's not the case because the video won't see the light of day if we don't fix it Okay, we've replaced the two transistors and we've replaced the fusible resistor, so we'll just resolder that back in place now. And we'll resolder the two transistors. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to inspect to see if there's any other connections here that look like they could be questionable. Make sure that we didn't have these parts fail due to a, um, a cold solder connection that caused a bit of an arc over either in the primary or the secondary of the power supply. One of the problems when you're dealing with these type of power supplies is that they're running at such high voltages, 380 volts is on the primary side here. So it doesn't take much and any component that fails is going to be catastrophic. It's going to take other parts out with it. So that's what we want to check just to make sure that there's no other obvious things before I put power to this thing. They don't call switching power supplies voltage to smoke converters for nothing. Now for the moment of truth. I put the board back in. Let's apply power. With the power switch over here. Is it going to work? It says it's a Sony. Let's get an input on this thing and see if we can get a picture. So there we have it. We've uh, fixed another one. I've just got a just a regular uh, antenna or cable type broadcast on here from my media player so it's not high definition but uh, 
We'll get the high definition source hooked up to this and see how it looks. And there we have it. It looks beautiful. Fantastic. Start the uh, movie playing here. Oops. Play. Start the uh, movie playing and see how it looks. I'm not going to let this thing run for more than a few seconds here because uh, you know how the uh, guys at YouTube get upset with us if we let anything more than a few seconds play. So maybe just the uh, opening screen here. This TV has a very good picture. For an LCD TV, I'm actually quite impressed. This has got a phenomenal picture. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll just turn the lights on here again so I can just go over the board again and we'll show you what parts were blown on this thing. So the set came in, it was dead. I checked my standby supply here. This diode D 6201 cathode had the 3.3 volts on it. The third one up, the red wire here, being the power on. It sends 3.3 volts back from the main board to turn on the power supply. It was at that point in time that I started to realize that the problem was more of a problem in the, in the main power supply and not the standby. And it comes up right on this optocoupler, which is PH61, I guess it is, 6103, the middle one here. There's a voltage placed across the diode side, which is this side here. I got the power of the TV is shut off, so I don't have to worry about sticking my fingers in there, by the way. Uh, so we have about one point six volts, 1.7 volts across these two terminals. I just measured it with respect to ground because this is on the cold side. What that does is it makes the the LED part of this optocoupler start to shine. It shines a light internal. That's why it's called an opto isolator, an optocoupler. It optically isolates the hot side, which this side of the power supply is hot, hot ground. This side is the cold side. When the LED shines on the phototransistor, the phototransistor conducts. And that's like closing a switch here. This is what turns on the oscillator. The oscillator turns on these two transistors which switch back and forth. One on and the other one on. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. This is the fusible resistor. It's a 0.1 ohm resistor. Measuring between the hot ground, which is the case of the main rectifier filter. This is the hot side of the chassis, the hot side of the transformer. The cold side is the isolated side. This is the DC side. So measuring between, you don't measure between your chassis ground and your hot circuitry. You measure between your hot ground, which is the negative terminal of the main filter. Measuring between the hot side and the fusible resistor showed me about what was it, I think it was 380 volts, it was way up there. On one side, the other side had like negative two, which told me that we had a major problem here, short circuit. Check the two transistors here, these are uh, MOSFET transistors, shorted. Here's our meter in diode test mode. Here's the dead transistors. Dead short. Dead short. Here's our fusible resistor. And it is open. Original parts were 2SK4096. I didn't have them, but I did have a couple of replacement parts from an old another TV here with a broken screen. 
I was able to pull those parts off the power supply for this other TV. And uh, get this one going. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll uh, catch you in another one real soon. I'm thinking maybe I'll make one as I tear this other TV down. We'll, tear, we'll do a tear down on this one. And I'll gut this thing and then get rid of the rest of it. So maybe we'll do that one tomorrow. But for now, this one's bad together. And if you notice the TV that's sitting behind here, that's my plasma that I'm still waiting for a replacement board for the one that uh, the video I did a week or so ago. I'm still waiting to get my replacement. We'll have that one going next week, I hope. If everything goes as planned, I'll have the board in next week. And you'll see a follow-up video for that fairly soon. Hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll catch you in the next video.